Now it's time to learn about a technique for finding derivatives known as implicit differentiation. And think about this little equation here, x squared y equals 5. This is called an implicit function. We typically think of our functions written as y equals something, some expression usually involving x. y is some function of x. And we could write this one this way. We could say y is equal to 5 over x squared. And when they're written like this, this is said to be in explicit form. y is explicitly stated as some function of x. Written like this, it's said to be in implicit form. y is not written as a function of x, but presumably y could be solved for some function of x, solved to be written as some function of x. So written this way, it still implies that y is a function of x. It's just a, uh, just a fact that sometimes you're not given your equations in that form. y is some function of x. And sometimes you're given an equation and it's difficult or impossible to put into that form. Like look at this for example. Sine of xy equals y squared. Um, I actually couldn't tell you off the top of my head how to solve that for y. Uh, but I, I, my guess is it would be pretty tricky. But this is still a relationship involving x and y. And it would still represent a curve in the plane we could find presumably some x and y values which would satisfy this equation and those x and y values would form some kind of curve in the plane and it makes sense to speak of the slope of the curve at a given point so this right here dy dx is meaningful in relation to this function even though it's an implicit function the the problem is if your pro if your function is given implicitly like that how do you find the derivative and you do that with implicit differentiation. And I think this is most easily explained with an example. So enough theory, let's head over to the uh, first example here. x squared plus y squared equals 9, find dy dx. And what I'm going to be showing you here is the technique of implicit differentiation. First though, let's think about our equation. You should recognize that x squared plus y squared equals 9 is the equation for a circle centered at the origin with a radius of 3. So something like this. And we're told to find dy dx, the slope of this curve. And specifically we're going to find the slope of the curve at x equals negative 2. But first we'll come up with a general equation for dy dx and then we'll use that to find the slope at this particular place and you can see on the graph here x equals negative 2 is right there so there are two points on this curve where x equals negative 2 so I'll have two values for the slope one positive and one negative okay now how do we do this how do we find the derivative of the function without solving it for y remember the point is that the the equation is given to us in implicit form and we, we may not want to solve it for y, or we may not be able to solve it for y, but we can still take the derivative, still find dy dx. So here we go. You simply start with the equation as given, and what we're going to do is take the derivative of each side. Now remember the fundamental concept in all of algebra. What you learned in Algebra 1 was that you can manipulate equations by doing the same thing to each side. You can take any equation and multiply both sides by the same thing, uh, subtract the same thing from both sides, uh, square root both sides. You can do pretty much whatever you want to do to an equation as long as you do the same thing to each side. What we're going to do here is take this equation and take the derivative of each side. So I'll take the derivative with respect to x of the left side and the derivative with respect to x of the right side. Simply following that concept from algebra, whatever I do to one side of an equation, I do to another. So I'll take the derivative of the left side here, and the left side is two terms, so I take the derivative term by term. And this is easy. The derivative of x squared is simply 2x. The derivative of y squared, though, be careful here. y, remember, is a function of x. Even though it's not written that way, written implicitly, we call this implicit form because it implies that y is a function of x. So it's helpful here to think of y as a function and x as a variable. 
So if, if x is the variable, the derivative of x squared with respect to x is just 2x. But now we need to take the derivative of y squared with respect to x, remembering that y is thought of as a function of x. So we have a function here squared. This right here is an outer function and an inner function. The squaring is the outer function and y itself is the inner function. So the derivative of that is going to be 2y times the derivative of the inner function, dy dx. And that's the only tricky part. When you are taking the derivative of the y, don't forget to apply the chain rule right there. And then on the right side, the derivative of 9 is simply 0, because the derivative of a constant is 0. And we'll see more examples of going from here to here, from an equation to the next step, which is taking the derivative of each side. We'll work through more examples coming up. But now, remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to find dy dx. And dy dx shows up in this equation right here. So now we can take this equation and solve algebraically for dy dx. So I'll just rearrange this and I'll say 2y dy dx equals negative 2x. I just took this term and moved it over to the right side and made it negative. And um, I can cancel the 2's, so let's get rid of those. And divide both sides by y and I get dy dx equals negative x over y. And that's it. That's the derivative of this curve. At any point on this curve, let's just pick a point at random, this point right here, that point has an x and a y value. And the slope of the curve at that point is found with this equation, negative x over y. Now we need to find the slope at x equals negative 2, so let's think about this. At x equals negative 2, well clearly the slope is going to be found with this equation. We're going to put in negative 2 for x, but what do we put in for y? Well, the point on the curve here and here, we can find the y value because we know every point on this curve is described by that equation. So I can find the y value. I'm going to take the original equation and solve it for y now. y equals the square root of 9 minus x squared. And so at x equals negative 2, we get the square root of 9 minus 4 or the square root of 5, it, and it's really plus or minus the square root of 5. So that's what we put in for y. So there's going to be two answers, the upper and the lower. Let's look at the upper part. The upper, x is negative 2, and y is the positive square root of 5. So dy dx is negative x, that's negative negative 2 over the square root of 5, and um, I'm not going to rationalize the denominator right there, although you certainly could, and the, the lower, the lower point here has a x value of negative 2 and a y value of negative square root of 5, so the derivative dy dx is negative x over y, so that's negative 2, or negative negative 2, which is just 2 over negative square root of 5. And we typically put the negative sign either out front or up top. But those are our two answers. That's the slope of the graph at x equals negative 2. And in the next video, we'll work through some more examples. The main idea here is simply taking the derivative of each side and we'll see some more examples, all of which involve this step of the chain rule that a lot of people find to be the tricky part. So hang in there for the next video and you'll see that done again a few more times.